so let us start the uh, derivation of the expression for thermal conductivity we will take up today okay so thermal conductivity is basically the measure of thermal conduction in case of metals okay what is the amount of heat conducted by the conductor in the presence of the temperature gradient there should be temperature difference between the two ends of the conductor or from one point to the other point there should be temperature difference then there will be thermal conduction okay so here consider two cross sections a and b okay of the conductor so one end is a another end is b in the uniform metallic rod ab separated by distance lambda so end a and end b are separated by lambda what is lambda here lambda is mean free part of the electron let the temperature gradient be do t by do sorry dt by dx along x direction okay so temperature gradient is dt by dx so if you change the distance by dx there will be change of temperature by dt okay so dt by dx is the temperature gradient so distance between point a and point b is lambda that is the mean free part of the electron okay so let a be at high temperature t a is maintained at high temperature then b which is at a distance lambda will be at the temperature t minus lambda into dt by dx because dt by dx is the temperature gradient along x axis so temperature is decreasing if you go from point a to point b by how much temperature is decreasing that is distance into temperature gradient what is the distance here distance is lambda temperature gradient is dt by dx therefore temperature at b is t minus lambda into dt by dx okay now heat conduction takes place from point a to point b because always heat flows from higher temperature region to the lower temperature region always heat flows from higher temperature region to the lower temperature region so a is at a temperature t and b is at a temperature t minus lambda into dt by dx so during the movement of electrons in the rod collision takes place and collision will transfer the kinetic energy from one electron to another electron okay so kinetic energy is always conserved it is a elastic collision so the total amount of kinetic energy is going to be conserved during the collision so hence electrons near a lose their kinetic energy while electrons near b gain the kinetic energy kinetic energy transfer will take place because of that heat is going to transfer let area of cross section of the conductor is unit let us assume that area of cross section of the considered conductor is unity and electrons will flow from point a to point b otherwise they will transfer the energy from point a to point b distance is lambda so from point a to point b there is no collision andre illinda illi collide aagi heat energy transfer aagta because lambda is the mean free path okay so this is the situation we are considering for particular conductor of unit area of cross section one end is at higher temperature another end is at lower temperature let n be the conduction electrons per unit volume conduction electron means free electrons free electrons per unit volume of the conductor that is taken to be small n then small v is the average velocity of these electrons okay so average velocity of free electrons is taken to be small v now according to this free electron theory the average kinetic energy of free electrons at temperature t is given by half mv square is equal to 3 by 2 kbt okay so this is in accordance with kinetic theory of gases also and in free electron theory of gases the free electron theory also electrons are considered to be just like the gas molecules therefore the thermal energy of the electron is given by 3 by 2 kbt where kb is the boltzmann constant okay t is the 
temperature half mv square represents kinetic energy so kinetic energy of the electron is equal to 3 by 2 kbt at point a so what is the kinetic energy of the electron at point a what is the temperature temperature is t therefore the kinetic energy of the electron is 3 by 2 kbt okay is a general expression this is the general expression half mv square is equal to 3 by 2 kbt it depends on temperature you can find out kinetic energy of the electron at any point if you know the temperature so at point a the kinetic energy is 3 by 2 kbt simply and at b what is the average kinetic energy of the electron it is 3 by 2 kb what is the temperature temperature is t minus lambda into dt by dx okay so kinetic energy at point a and at point b have been represented by means of the uh, as a function of temperature so 3 by 2 kbt is the kinetic energy at point a 3 by 2 kb into t minus lambda into dt by dx is the kinetic energy at point b therefore the energy carried by electrons from end a to end b okay and there one electron what is the energy carried by an electron one the electron in the that is given by the energy at point a minus energy at point b the difference of energy that is the net amount of energy carried that is going to be 3 by 2 kbt minus 3 by 2 kb into t minus lambda into dt by dx and that implies e is equal to 3 by 2 kb into lambda into dt by dx okay so uh, 3 by 2 kbt 3 by 2 kbt that is going to be cancelled 3 by 2 kb into lambda into dt by dx remains okay it depends on the temperature gradient higher the temperature gradient higher will be the energy carried okay take it as a equation number 1 is an equation 1 anta othane this is giving you energy carried by one electron if electron goes from end a to end b so this is the first step next let us move further so here we have assumed that n is the number of free electrons per unit volume of the conductor now this electron can move an electron any particular electron can move along six directions in a conductor it can move randomly there is no electric field only temperature gradient is there electric field apply madilla that's why they can move randomly and they have six different direction let us take in a cartesian coordinate in tadre it can move along plus x minus x positive y negative y positive z negative z it can move along six different directions okay so then the number of electrons which are moving in each direction six different directions are there and they can move uh, equally okay and there is a equal probability to move the electron in a particular direction that's why the total number of electrons in a per in unit volume is n then in each direction there will be 1 by 6 into n number of electrons they are going to move okay total six directions are there that's why electrons can move in a single direction and their number is 1 by 6 into n then this is the total number of electrons moving in a single direction then the number of electrons moving from a to b per unit area per unit time okay what are the number of electrons moving in single direction in one second per unit time that is going to be 1 by 6 into n into v because velocity is nothing but distance moved per unit time this is velocity is distance by time so per unit time andre this velocity represent distance moved suppose electrons moves at distance uh, let us take lambda then it if its velocity is v then velocity is equal to lambda in one second okay so per unit time alli estu aagutade estu electrons move aagutade that is equal to 1 by 6 into n into v number of electrons into its velocity that is going to give you number of electrons moving in a single direction in one second 
per unit area already i have taken conductor as is having the unit area of cross section okay then therefore the amount of heat energy carried by the electrons per unit area per unit time from a to b or in one direction one direction just heat energy flow aktive so we have seen that the energy carried by one electron is 3 by 2 kb lambda into dt by dx how many number of electrons are moving in one direction that is 1 by 6 into n into v in one second that's why the total amount of heat energy going from point a to b in one second is going to be 1 by 6 n into v that is number of electrons moving in one second into energy of one electron that is 3 by 2 kb lambda into dt by dx if you simplify it you will get qab will be equal to 1 by 4 n into v kb lambda into dt by dx similarly the heat energy will be carried by the opposite electrons also because the equal number of electrons are moving in opposite direction also so in each direction there will be 1 by 6 n into v number of electrons a in the b ge solpa electrons carry madidre some electrons will oppose that heat heat energy flow they will try to push the heat in the opposite direction what is that amount that heat energy is also equal okay so b q into b into a q, q of b a is equal to minus 1 by 4 into n v into kb lambda into dt by dx this is the heat energy carried from b to a so so what is the net amount of heat energy transferred that will be equal to heat energy carried from a to b minus heat energy carried from b to a okay so just you take the difference you will get q is equal to 1 by 4 nv kb lambda into dt by dx minus minus of same amount so this will become addition so finally the net amount of heat energy transferred between end a to end b in one second is going to be 1 by 2 nv kb lambda into dt by dx okay so remember the energy carried from a to b is 1 by 4 nv kb lambda into dt by dx same amount of energy effectively will be carried in the opposite direction okay that will opposition but that opposition is not uh in the same direction it is in opposite direction that's why the negative sign the negative sign bartade that's why the net amount of heat energy that is heat energy carried in a to b and heat energy carried from b to a adan difference thondre you will get the net amount of heat energy transferred that is equal to half nv kb lambda into dt by dx that is the net amount of heat energy transferred between end a to end b in one second okay that is one point we have taken here next according to the theory of thermal conduction the heat energy flowing per unit area per unit time heat energy uh, flowing per unit area per unit time is directly proportional to temperature gradient let us take the definition of the heat energy transport okay and it shows that q is directly proportional to temperature gradient if there is a more temperature gradient more heat energy will be transported and here the proportionality constant is introduced that is called as thermal conductivity where k is called as thermal conductivity the equation becomes q is equal to k into dt by dx okay so this is written here in order to compare this equation with the the previous equation obtained here equation number 2 equation number 2 is also giving you heat energy transported from one point to another point in the presence of the temperature gradient dt by dx okay so just you compare this equation 2 and equation 3 where k is called as thermal conductivity how to define this k k is defined as the amount of heat energy carried per unit area per unit time when the two ends of the conductors are maintained at unit temperature gradient okay 
so thermal conductivity is defined as the amount of heat energy carried per unit area per unit time when two ends of the conductor are maintained at unit temperature gradient that is obtained using this equation only if dt by dx equal to unity then q otherwise this k will be equal to q dt by dx is if it is unity then k equal to the amount of heat energy transported so an amount of heat energy transported per unit time per unit area of cross section when temperature gradient is maintained at unity that is called as the thermal conductivity so now compare the previous equation the equation number 2 and equation number 3 if you compare them comparing above equations with q that is q is equal to 1 by 2 into nv kb lambda into dt by dx this is one equation then if you compare these two equations what is k then k will be equal to 1 by 2 into nv kb into lambda okay so this is the expression for thermal conductivity according to free electron theory of metals so what you have done we have obtained the effective amount of heat energy transferred from point a to point b in one second and that is compared with the basic standard definition okay the definition ge compare made okay so finally we will get the expression for thermal conductivity as k is equal to 1 by 2 nv kb into lambda where n is the number of electrons per unit volume v is the velocity then k uh, free path or mean free path of the metal okay so just i will uh, again explain this derivation so here we have taken the situation where a conductor is maintained at different temperatures okay one end of the conductor is maintained at temperature t and temperature gradient is dt by dx the other end of the conductor is at a distance lambda where lambda is the mean free path of the electron so then temperature is decreasing we assume that temperature is decreasing from point a to point b what is the decrease in temperature that is equal to distance into gradient temperature gradient so t minus lambda into dt by dx dx so this one first you have to assume so you have to define the temperature at point a and temperature at point b you have to define idanna define madko okay then assume that area of cross section of the conductor taken considered is unity andre area of cross section now separate agi multiply madu avashyakate illa so we will assume that this is going to be unity then consider n is the conduction electrons per unit volume n anna free electrons per unit volume then v is the average velocity of these electrons then according to the classical theory the kinetic energy of the electron is equal to 3 by 2 kbt if you know the temperature you can find the kinetic energy okay so that kinetic energy is responsible for thermal conduction according to this free electron theory so kinetic energy of the electron is responsible for the carrier of heat there is heat carrier uh, in the form of kinetic energy kinetic energy transfer again as the heat energy Uh, flow acts on the assume mode now at point a what is the kinetic energy of the electron 3 by 2 kbt at point b what is the kinetic energy of the electron it is 3 by 2 kb into t minus lambda into dt by dx define the kinetic energy at point a then define the kinetic energy at point b then what is the energy carried by one electron from end a to end b take the difference you will get energy carried by one electron equal to 3 by 2 kb lambda into dt by dx adu energy carried by one electron remember it is a kinetic energy carried by one electron then what are the number of electrons they are moving from a to b just you calculate that so if there are n number of electrons in one unit volume then there are six different possible directions so in each direction 
one by six into n number of electrons can move. So in one second, how many electrons will move in one direction? That is one by six into n into v. First electron no, one directionally moves. Now you calculate what is the effective amount of heat energy carried from point A to point B in one second. So that is number of electrons into energy carried by one electron. So that is one by six into n into v into three by two into kb lambda into dt by dx. Otherwise, from A to B, the amount of heat carried by the electrons is one by four into n v kb lambda into dt by dx. Similarly, the electrons moving from B to A, they will oppose the heat conduction. Remember, in the negative x direction also, same number of electrons will move. And that heat carried by the electron from B to A is minus 1 by 4 into Nv Kb lambda into dt by dx. Okay. Therefore, what is the net amount? Heat carried by the electrons from A to B minus the opposition of the electrons from B to A. Then you calculate matter, you will get the effective amount of heat carried. That will be equal to QAB minus QBA. Then we will add matter, you will get Q is equal to 1 by 2 NV KB lambda into dt by dx. So this is the amount of heat energy carried by the electrons from one end to the another end in one second according to free electron theory of metals. Now you define the thermal conductivity. Thermal conductivity definition in it says that Q amount of heat energy carried per unit area per unit time is directly proportional to temperature gradient. Okay. The proportionality constant is called as thermal conductivity. Okay. This is how thermal conductivity is defined. So now if dt by dx is equal to unity, then K is equal to Q. Otherwise, thermal conductivity is basically defined as the amount of heat energy carried per unit area per unit time when the two ends of the conductors are maintained at unit temperature gradient. Now, this equation is obtained. So, definition of thermal conductivity, this equation is obtained. Now, compare this equation with the, the expression for heat energy carried obtained using the free electron theory of metals. Other E equation, this equation. Compare these two. Definitely, you will come to know that K is equal to half Nv Kb into lambda. Okay. So, that is the expression for thermal conductivity. So, this is how you can derive the expression for thermal conductivity according to free electron theory of metals. This is one step. So, here K, thermal conductivity is expressed in terms of free uh, path. Okay. Mean free path of the electron will express model. How to express this K in terms of relaxation time. Let us take that one also. So further, the mean free path is given by lambda equal to V into 2. So this is a distance equal to velocity into time. Distance moved by the electron is equal to its velocity into relaxation time. Okay, Where V is the average velocity of free electrons and 2. 2 is the relaxation time. Substitute for lambda in the above equation. In the lambda Substitute matter. We have k is equal to half nv kb into lambda. Substitute for lambda. What is lambda? Lambda is v into 2. Okay. So finally, you can observe the expression for thermal conductivity in terms of relaxation time is half nv square into kb into 2. Remember, 2 is not temperature, it is a relaxation time. Okay. So this is how you can express the thermal conductivity in terms of non-mean free path and also in terms of the relaxation time 